traffic jams, crowded trains and sheer endless waiting. Nothing in Berlin stresses me out more than trying to get from one place to another. And I'm not the only one. Traffic is a growing concern in many large cities across the globe. Smart technologies can help us solve this chaos. How exactly? That's our topic on Shift today. Das Auto. Many still use cars as their main mode of transportation. Aside from air pollution and the climate crisis, this also has a third huge drawback, more and more traffic jams. In Paris, for example, drivers are stuck bumper to bumper about 165 hours a year. Mon Dieu! That's nearly a solid week in your car, honking at strangers. But probably not for long. In an autonomous car, passengers can use the ride to do something much more productive. I, for one, wouldn't mind brushing up on my French. But for this day to come, there are still a lot of things left to work out and the biggest challenge developers still face is humans. Driverless cars use their versions of senses to control themselves autonomously. But so far, these cars have merely recognized pedestrians as objects in motion. AI systems are unable to calculate pedestrians' unpredictable behavior or to properly understand their body language. London-based tech company Humanizing Autonomy and other research institutes are working to develop models for human behavior in traffic. This data will hopefully then train autonomous cars. So humans are very complex, especially when we come to cities. Uh, we can't treat them with normal motion planning algorithms. Our expertise is in combining behavioral psychology with statistical and deep learning AI. For pedestrians too, it's important to be able to communicate with an autonomous car. The normal eye contact and gesturing won't help. Developers are working on interfaces that could be used to signal to pedestrians whether or not they can cross the street, by using light signals in the windshield, for instance. There's a problem, though. Pedestrian behavior and nonverbal communication differs around the world. If you look at, for example, in Munich, uh, no one will jaywalk in Munich. Um, whereas if you come to London, people are jaywalking all the time. The great thing about uh, vehicles today, and of course, uh, uh, the autonomous vehicles of the future, is that you know, uh, the vehicles know where they are. We have a vision that for each of these places, it would be a different set of models that would be used for each of these places. And these models would be uh, fine-tuned specifically for that road culture. Clearly, there's still a long way to go. And that's why experts from all around the world gather regularly to discuss future mobility solutions, like at Berlin's IFA trade show. One main topic is, how can a driverless car see? Or more specifically, which sensors does it need to recognize and respond to its surroundings? As was to be expected, Tesla's Elon Musk has a very strong opinion on that matter. Let's take a closer look. Autonomous cars use cameras, ultrasound, and radar to analyze their surroundings, as well as the more modern LiDAR sensors that use lasers. We need these different types of sensors because radar and LiDAR can calculate the distance to objects very accurately. But they don't capture enough details to recognize what these objects really are. When it comes to humans, it's the camera that's best equipped to detect what their intentions are. Are they about to cross the road or not? The industry's top companies are increasingly setting their sights on LiDAR technology, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging. Here, sensors attached to the car send millions of laser impulses every second. This creates a precise 3D image of the surrounding objects. Tesla boss Elon Musk recently ruffled some feathers when he said LiDAR was too expensive and that cameras, radar and AI systems would suffice. Tesla uses only radar. Radio waves are used to measure an object's distance and speed. Using this data and the camera images, a 3D image of the surroundings is then created with the help of AI. Florian Petit, roboticist and manufacturer of LiDAR systems, disagrees with Elon Musk. 
The problem is that cameras don't offer direct information about distance, and radar isn't high res, so there's missing information. This means you need another source of information to be able to navigate safely. The question here is, can you save costs on safety? And I, for one, am absolutely against this. In my opinion, mobility needs to be completely safe, which also means using the best sensors. By the way, experts believe one out of ten cars on the road in 2030 will be self-driving. Some are already hitting the streets today, like this autonomous bus at a clinic in Florida. During the corona pandemic, self-driving cars offer a whole new advantage. They can help minimize the spread. But these are just precursors to truly autonomous vehicles, where a passenger only needs to punch in the destination, turn over the engine and then lean back and relax. But do we really want to let a robot take the wheel? Is it even safe? And who makes the better driver, man or machine? I think humans are very good drivers, but machines are better. It's not like their actual driving is better in every situation, but they're always paying attention. People get distracted by their phone, or eating an ice cream, or drinking coffee, and that is the problem. Humans just aren't always paying attention. And machines are programmed to always be attentive, which is why they're better drivers overall. At the moment, it's definitely humans who are the better drivers. The machine offers good support, especially in emergencies, but humans are definitely better. In the future, it will definitely be the machines. The advantage of an automated system is that it's always activated, it has a 360-degree view, and, crucial for the city, it has a general understanding of the situation. What are the other road users planning to do? So right now, I would definitely say man. Um, in the city, for sure, man. Uh, but man makes lots of mistakes, and this is... Um, led to and continues to lead to lots of injuries and deaths in cities themselves. I'm optimistic that in the future we will have automated systems that create a safer and more pleasant city for all road users. What? How could a robot possibly be a better driver than what? But joking aside, artificial intelligence does have some obvious advantages. It never gets tired or distracted and it always keeps it cool. I wish I could say the same about myself. Either way, robot vehicles can't solve the issue of inner city congestion on their own. They need additional digital assists, like software that can factor in my preferred modes of transportation, my current location and the time of day to find the quickest, most efficient way to get where I'm going. Experts at the Fraunhofer Institute have teamed up with great minds across Europe to develop just that. Team is a smart navigation system for all road users. Cars, bikes, buses, and trucks. It's a project that's designed to regulate the entire traffic and help everyone reach their destination faster. The SatNav supplies information on traffic jams and makes recommendations. For instance, what speed the driver will need to travel at to make the next green light. The real challenge in traffic management is to understand the needs of all road users trying to get from A to B. Then, this needs to be analyzed and reconciled with what's actually possible within mobility. In the future, I could definitely see new technology helping us to react in a more dynamic way. Team would send data to traffic management centers while it simultaneously navigates road users. Traffic management would then be able to react to the various situations immediately. They could adjust traffic light durations and speed limits, change the bus schedule on short notice, divert heavy traffic onto unused bus lanes, and much more. These decisions would have to be made visible on the street view immediately. If I say traffic lanes will be used more dynamically, then I have to think of a way to do that, maybe with LEDs or something. What can I bring into this space to make it more dynamic? Virtual traffic lights could be an option. If there are lots of cars, maybe we need a traffic light. But if the road is quiet, then this could simply be displayed in the individual vehicle. If concepts like these can reduce traffic in Berlin and other cities, then great. But if I'm being honest, the cipher nerd in me was hoping the future of mobility would look a little cooler. Like flying cars. Lucky for me, there are already researchers out there working out some crazy new ideas. Check these out. 
the flywheel is an autonomously driving vehicle which could replace cars. The wheels can be connected to one another to create longer units. Flywheels are designed to use existing subway and railway tunnels as a form of collective transport, and then they can disconnect again to bring the passengers to their exact destinations. The idea came from architect Max Schwitthaler. I don't think of the flywheel as a form of motorized private transport, like a car. But it's not a public transport either, like the subway. It's something in between. It takes the best of both worlds and creates something new, which we've called a collective mobility system. The Volocopter is an electrically powered autonomous flying taxi that can bring passengers to their destination much quicker than other means of transport. The developers aim to reduce the number of vehicles on the road whilst also reducing air pollution. And this is the Hyperloop, a pod that shoots through a tube almost at the speed of sound. The idea came from tech visionary Elon Musk in 2013. The air is sucked out of the tube creating a vacuum which, with barely any wind resistance, propels the passenger capsules to speeds up to 1,200 kilometers an hour. Developers around the world are currently working on Hyperloop projects. A two-hour car ride, say from Abu Dhabi to Dubai, would take just about 12 minutes. Wow, with that, I might even enjoy commuting to work every morning. But it remains to be seen if vehicles like these would be available to the wider public or if they remain toys for the super rich. Whatever happens, experts all around the world are working hard on the future of mobility. If I had my way, I'd hop off my balcony directly into my flying car, then use a bike for shorter routes. For example, an e-cargo bike. The future of mobility. How do you imagine it? What would you like to see? Let us know what you think. I can't wait to hear your ideas. That's it for me for today. See you next time.